you can go from like not understanding anything this person is talking about and then suddenly you get it and you're like oh my god Hey guys, it's Nicole. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe for more music related content. I have had so many requests from you Swifties that I need to react to Phoebe Bridger. So, so I decided to react to Punisher today. Isn't that a type of hot sauce? The Punisher? I have never listened to any of her music other than her work with Taylor on Nothing New, so this is completely new to me. This is all new, not nothing new. I can't even name one song by her, so this should be interesting. And before we get into it, I would just like to tell you about today's sponsor, Moolah. Moolah is an automatic coupon hunting browser extension that searches, analyzes, and applies the best coupon codes to your shopping cart. It saves you both time and effort of having to search and test codes manually. Moolah scours the internet for valid coupon codes so you no longer have have to. Valid codes are automatically applied at checkout of over 30,000 retail partners. After installing the browser extension, I was very surprised at just how many websites I was getting coupon notifications for while browsing. One of those websites is Taylor Swift's merch site. Being a Swifty with a desire to collect merch can get very expensive, okay? With Moolah, the cost of being a Swifty can go down with the coupon codes it finds for you. Here, it's notifying me that there are 14 coupons available for this website, so I think I'm going to try this one out. That's much better. See how it took money off of every one of the items in my cart. This is such a lifesaver, you guys. All you have to do to install this extension is click my link down in the description, scroll to the very bottom of the page it takes you to, and click add to Chrome. Chrome is the only browser Moolah is currently available in, but they are working on expanding. You'll be taken to this page and there will be a button in place of this remove from Chrome button that should say add to Chrome and you're good to go. It's that easy. You can also create an account with Moolah by clicking on this far right tab at the bottom once it is installed. I'm already signed in, but yours will will show a join button. The more that you check in and use Moolah, the more points you earn, which will score you some cash back. Thank you, Moolah, for sponsoring this video. And thank you guys so much for supporting the sponsors. I am very happy about today's because it is completely free for you guys, and every download that you keep without uninstalling for 30 days is a way to support my channel so that I can keep making videos. I'm going to be listening to these through headphones for copyright reasons and because my laptop speakers suck. I will have timestamps down below to all of the songs, and let's just get right into it. Is this gonna be like early 2000s nostalgia? I have absolutely no context on this album. Really ominous sounds to start it off. Why am I scared? Got that violin. I'm so uneasy right now. Okay, that's not what I was expecting. <laughs> That's not at all what I was expecting in the slightest. I'm kind of down though. I'm very intrigued. I'm very intrigued. I really like the titles of this track list. They're very creative. She kind of looks like the actress from Gone Girl. Does anybody else agree? It could just be the angle. Ooh. Nice beat. Okay. <laughs> okay, wait. Wait, wait. <laughs> is the third line already murder? <laughs> She's already in her no body, no crime phase. This is her second album. <laughs> it's still on pause. I'm just experiencing a lot of unease. Oh, there's a really growly harmony in the chorus. I like the outro. I'm really confused, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I don't even know what to think lyrically. When your skinhead neighbor goes missing, I'll plant a garden in the yard. It just sounds like she like murdered this person and like buried them in the backyard. Everything else confuses me. I mean, it seems like some stuff about growing up. I don't know when you got taller. That sounds like she's seeing someone from her childhood and they had a growth spurt since then. I hopped the fence when I was 17 and I knew what I wanted. Like um, coming of age, realizing what you want out of life. I like the second verse. When I grow up, I'm gonna look up from my phone and see my life. Maybe she's hoping once she gets older, she'll not want to live attached to her phone and actually be present in the moment. There's some stuff about at the movies, a recurring dream. She talks about a recurring dream. I don't know the significance of it. I like it, but I am confused. It's creepier than I expected. When I Now that I really look at like the album artwork, she's wearing like a skeleton suit. So like, am I surprised? I just literally know nothing about her. Ooh, really nice guitar. Is this a happier one or am I going to be deceived? Oh, that bass. This chorus is really nice. Hold on, this reminds me of something. What does this remind me of? What the hell is that band? Beautiful Day by U2. Is anybody else getting that? Something about the percussion. A brass section after the chorus, okay. That's not what I was expecting either. Is this about her father? The language is really nice. I feel like this one's a little more straightforward. I have no idea what Garden Song is about. I like the second verse. It's very descriptive. Sunset's been a freak show, maybe Sunset Boulevard. On the weekend, so I've been driving 
driving out to the suburbs to park at the Goodwill and stare at the chemtrails with my little brother. He said you called on his birthday, you were off by like 10 days, but you get a few points for trying. Good God. Oh my God. I really like the upbeat sounds. I really like the second verse. I wanted to see the world through your eyes until it happened. Then I changed my mind. So maybe she's like accidentally being sucked into the same lifestyle he had. Like it talks about how he's trying to get sober. Maybe she also struggled with some kind of addiction. As I said, I don't know anything about her or her life. I'm just like making assumptions based off the lyrics. The outro, guess I lied, I'm a liar. Who lies, cause I'm a liar. She's conflicted, which I get, you know, with a relationship that has to do with a family member. A lot of times it's hard to like make yourself hate them. That's what I'm gathering from this. As always, feel free to leave your interpretations down below. I feel like I enjoy songs more when I understand the lyrical content and like the depth of it. The title track. Wow, okay. First line. D-R-U-G reference. Okay. I love the chords and the pre-chorus. The violins. These chords sound like a Disney song. And she mentions Snow White. This is beautiful, but I don't know what's going on. God, I'm really lost. I'm over here googling definitions of words again. Okay, Dianetics has to do with Scientology. Scientology freaks me out. So this person- I don't know who this is about. I have no idea. A lot of this seems to be like her father, but I don't think this feels right. This is someone she idolizes or relates to. This person lives by the Scientology church, right? <laughs> Have you guys ever seen that in person? Cause it's horrifying. It's like insane. And I'm from Oklahoma where churches are very larger than life, but like that thing was a whole, it's in its own category. He lived by, from the window, it's not a bad show if your favorite thing is Dianetics or Stucco. This person lived right next to it and that's what you see out your window. Imagine the kind of rent it costs to live there too with a view like that. There's a lot of California vibes. Punisher is a noun that Phoebe created to describe a fan that doesn't know when to stop talking. Okay, this is somebody in music. You're the way to my heart. I hear so many stories of you at the bar, but you're always sweet to your fans. Okay, I'm following this part. I wish I could say the same. I swear I'm not angry. That's just my face. Ooh, a copycat killer with a chemical cut. Alliteration, alliteration alliteration copycat killer i watch a lot of true crime obviously this is a metaphor she wants to be like this artist like how sometimes people imitate crimes they see happening with a chemical cut that's a really interesting way to talk about like hair breaking off from bleach because your hair is bleached i've never actually heard that term either i'm careless or i want to get caught parallels between sounding similar to this artist but also the whole copycat killer thing who i'm not i'm still a little confused <laughs> I enjoy it though. I like reading into things. And you know, a lot of times you don't get the meaning off of the first listen and that's fine. And there's a song called Halloween. This is way darker than I expected. I was expecting like cottagecore. People were kind of telling me, I don't know, it seemed people were making comparisons to Taylor around the folklore time. And I was expecting folky cottagecore. And it is kind of folky. It's definitely like indie, but it's like spooky. I see like similarities to like Billy even a little bit. Why does Halloween have 666,000 views? <laughs> I'm uncomfortable. Ooh, really nice guitar. I'm creeped out again. <laughs> I hate living by the hospital. The sirens go all night. I used to joke that if they woke you up, somebody better be dying. That reminds me of that one tweet that's like, if I spend $100 on an STD test, I better have it. <laughs> she sings Halloween so beautifully. They killed a fan down by the stadium, was only visiting, they beat him to death. This makes me think of that stupid Travis Scott crap. The woodwinds are creepy. The drums are creepy. Almost sacrificial. Sac Sacrificing. I guess it's about saying you're willing to like try to chameleon yourself for someone else who wants you to be something else. Like it's Halloween, we can be whatever we want. I'll be whatever you want. Like you're desperate to keep this person. So you'll kind of change yourself for them. I'm confused how some of these lines correlate to that theme. I hate living by the hospital. The sirens go all night. I used to joke that if they woke you up, somebody better be dying. I don't know how that ties into it. As well as they killed a fan down by the stadium, was only visiting, they beat him to death. What does that have to do with it? Does anybody know? <laughs> What a title. Well, she's definitely not boring. This guitar makes me think of something that belongs on the Twilight soundtrack. The chorus. Her higher register sounds really good vocally. Her violins. Is the beat gonna drop at the end of the chorus? No, 
That's not. Oh, there it goes. This might be my favorite one so far. I'm still confused, but I like it. I will never be your vegetable. I want to believe that if I go outside, I'll see a tractor beam coming to take me to where I'm from. Aliens. It makes me think of Spaceship by Kesha. Okay, I really liked the sound of that, but I'm still really confused lyrically. I like the first verse. I think I understand the drowning out the morning birds with the same three songs over and over. I wish I wrote it, but I didn't. So I learned the words, hum along till the feeling's gone forever. When you play the shit out of a song that you love and then it no longer hurts like it did originally. This makes me think of the Red Album by Taylor. Like that used to be something that just made me cry on my bedroom floor when I was like 14. And now I just don't. It's just been so long. Like it's, you're like beating a dead horse. What a way to put that into words. I wished hard on a Chinese satellite cause the stars weren't out. I guess it's also a parallel to like the bus tours you can take in LA to like see celebrities houses. Took a tour to see the stars. Oh my God, how did she make that work for both those situations? Especially cause living in LA, you're not gonna see any stars, like real ones. I still don't know the main theme, <laughs> but I like the bits that I'm getting. You were screaming at the evangelicals. They were screaming right back from what I remember. Oh my God, the second verse. Like she doesn't believe in an afterlife, but she's saying she would partake in all these religious nonsense activities if it meant she would see this person when she dies. Oh wait, shit, is this just like about a lack of religion? I look at the sky and I feel nothing. I want to believe, you know, I hate to be alone. I want to be wrong. Holy shit. You can go from like not understanding anything this person is talking about and then suddenly you get it and you're like, oh my God. Okay, okay, wait, let me see if I can interpret the last chorus. Sometimes when I can't sleep, it's just a matter of time before I'm hearing things. I swore I could feel you through the walls, but that's impossible. Is this someone who died? Her rational mind is saying that's not real. Like you can convince yourself you don't believe in an afterlife until it's like someone who you know who could be there and you like, your mind maybe tries to convince you to deal with the grief. What the heck? Why do I always end up like this in my reaction? And then she parallels it to aliens. I want to believe that if I go outside, I'll see a tractor beam coming to take me to where I'm from. That's like not at all what I was expecting. That's really good lyricism. I say with like shakiness in my voice, I cried onto my neck again. <sighs> oh, Phoebe. So many space types of references. I hope this one's fun because I don't want to cry anymore. At least not immediately. Comparing her love to a dog waiting at your door with like a dead bird. The dog thinks it's doing the most amazing thing for you, but like you find it gross. Who thinks of that? She's describing a dream again. It's really realistic. Wait, the chorus only comes after four different verses. Okay, so bad relationship. Somebody who's like cheating. You couldn't have stuck your tongue down the throat of somebody who loves you more. And we fought about about John Lennon until I cried and then went to bed upset. You're sick and you're married and you might be dying. This guy's married. Really interesting perspectives that I haven't really seen in songs that talk about things like this. Oh, that's the only entirely self-written song. I wanted to pay attention to that. Well, other than the DVD menu thing. Run the tap till it's clear. Me and my nasty apartment that wouldn't stop spitting out green water. What does that actually mean? Is she talking about green water? That's what my mind goes to. My mind is also bringing like blood into the equation. Did somebody kill someone again? This reminds me of folklore, emotional affair, illicit affairs. The guitar feels like illicit affairs a little bit, sweating through the sheets, and I can see us tangled in bed sheets. Wake up and start a big fire in our one room apartment, but I'm too tired to have a pissing contest. Why does she sing that so beautifully? It's really cinematic. I mean, it's called Savior Complex and it really fits that theme, I guess. This person's like, not necessarily toxic, but like sometimes someone just doesn't bring out the best in you. Like she's trying so hard to like save this person and that's not healthy for her to like be putting her all into somebody else. Really interesting wording again. Oh boy. Well, I haven't cried in a few songs, so I guess it's time. Why does it slap? The intro. What? I see you. Like, I see you. Okay. The chorus. The way it's just drums and like that little guitar. Ooh, then the bass comes back in for the second verse. Oh my god. <laughs> This is an amazing second verse. If you're a work of art, I'm standing too close. I can see the brush strokes. She can see the imperfections like genetically passed down because she then says, I hate your mom. I hate it when she opens her mouth. It's amazing to me how much you can say when you don't know what you're talking about. 
how are things either like very beautiful and poetic or it's just like so conversational? Okay, this is interesting because it feels like the entire song's kind of taking place. She's like laying on the lawn. She tried to get into her house, but she's locked out. The outro says I'll climb through the window again, but right now it feels good not to stand. She's probably drunk. Then I'll leave it, the window wide open and let the dystopian morning light pour in. So it's kind of like re reality shows up in the morning, like, but you don't have to deal with it that night. Like, just lay in the lawn until you're ready to climb into the window and reality only comes in the morning. A messed up relationship again, I think. Maybe they started to resent each other over time. She's annoyed because he's too much like his mom. And then she says, I used to light you up. Now I can't even get you to play the drums because I don't know what I want until I fuck it up. They both have made mistakes. This one also makes me think of U2. I hear like musical influences from them. Maybe. I don't know. I don't listen to a lot of U2 though. Ooh, it's like country-ish. Is it about somebody running away? Wow, the chorus harmonies. Rebel without a clue, like a play on rebel without a cause. Ooh, the outro, whatever she wants, that high pitched, ooh. So she's moving from a Los Angeles kind of setting to Tennessee, Memphis, Nashville, Graceland. So it's kind of like a D-R-U-G trip. YouTube's been demonetizing me lately for like no reason, so I'm trying to be extra careful. I like the imagery of the first verse. No longer a danger to herself or others. She made up her mind and laced up her shoes, yelled down the hall, but nobody answered, so she walked outside without an excuse. It throws you right into like what's actively happening. No longer a danger to herself or others. This person just got out of the psych ward. So the she that Phoebe is talking about is the person she did the, um, the stuff with. The spending what was left of our serotonin. It's kind of a love song, or at least like friendship chip ish i don't know phoebe's sexuality but like it's romanticizing this girl kind of i would do anything she wants man i hate this part of texas isn't that like every part <laughs> wizard of oz reference three clicks and i'm home there's no place like my room oh the bird and the teeth like the dog thing from earlier whoa 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 i'm not gonna go down with my hometown in a tornado okay i know this is like wizard of oz reference but like as someone from oklahoma i feel that i'm pretty afraid of tornadoes <laughs> i feel like that's kind of silly but to the point where like i don't want to stay here and die from a freaking tornado that just sounds like the dumbest way to go i'm not gonna go down with my hometown in a tornado i relate to that on a different level probably not in the way she's meaning this makes me think of solar power the album Ooh, the outro verse thing the dynamic builds to the end oh my god a brass section again that's cool the end is here that's a clever way to end the album there's a creepy screaming crazy instrumental at the end what is she doing there with her breath at the end <laughs> what the heck was that okay there's a lot going on at the end what i'm kind of getting is like she talks about how much she wants to like go home three clicks and i'm home there's a place like my room romanticize a quiet life like when she gets back from tour she says she'll do all these things but she ends up just like laying around and resting which you should do when you're off work but also you want to motivate yourself to like do things you've wanted to do your whole life that are separate from work i think that's relatable to a lot of people but at the end she's saying like driving out into the sun let the ultraviolet cover me up windows down scream along all these things she passes on her way home it's like building and building and it feels almost like this there's gonna be this amazing climax of when she finally gets home that's like what she wants so badly and then it kind of loses me on like either way we're not alone i'll find a new place to be from a haunted house with a picket fence to float around and ghost my friends the billboard said the end is near i turned around there was nothing there yeah i guess the end is here oh she turned like she sees that sign she turns around it's just like miles of desert or field or whatever and she's like yeah it looks like there's nothing here it makes me think of this sign somebody was holding on campus once during finals week that said the end is near <laughs> i like how that can mean a lot of different things another thing i noticed was the when i call you come home a bird in your teeth it's like how she was the one who had the bird in her teeth for this person who wasn't acknowledging how much she was giving to this person and now the roles are reversed and she's the one who's not seeing this person's worth who like loves her maybe it's very interesting and i love the dynamics i love that it built so much at the end i can appreciate this album mostly for the lyrics for sure but i do like that it is musically interesting as well some tracks more than others really interesting oh my god the line about the tornado i'm not gonna go down with my hometown in a tornado i felt that i felt that when phoebe bridger said that <laughs> i don't know what my favorite tracks were they all really interested me in some way this is not what i was expecting did i react how you guys were expecting me to react that's also something i want to know i don't know what the hell to say are my favorite tracks maybe kyoto chinese satellites because that one made me cry and i love to cry those two maybe the most i need to listen again like i need to listen a few more times to really it's one of those albums you need to listen to 
a few times. Should I do a video reacting to her first album? If you guys want to see that, comment down below. If I have enough interest in it, I'll go ahead and do that. Thanks again to Moolah for sponsoring this video. Make sure to use my link down in the description so that you guys can save money on all your online purchases. I know people are possibly returning things, exchanging things they got for the holidays. This will be a very nice way to get the most out of your money. I'm just stunned right now. Oh my God. Comment down below what your favorite song on this album is and please comment your interpretations of these lyrics because I'm still confused. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you want to follow me on my Instagram, it is right here. And if you want to follow me on my TikTok, that is right here. I will see you all in January. I'm taking a very short break after this video and I hope you all have an amazing day. Bye guys.